each year you can potentially create $8,245 worth of value from that cow. Money! Hey everyone, today I'm going to go into excruciating detail on how much it costs to get a family milk cow. I'm going to lay out exactly how much it costs us to get our family milk cow, as well as an estimate for a more low budget option. Now I know it's going to seem like a lot once I start going through this, but I'm also going to go over the benefits and the value that you can create from having this cow on your property. <laughs> I'm gonna break this down in different categories all the way from milking supplies to fencing and everything in between. Now your individual situation is obviously gonna vary a lot. It's gonna matter whether you already have fencing or shelter or generational farm equipment. We didn't really have anything except for a barn that was already built on this property. All right, here we go on these costs. First is gonna be the cost of your cow. We paid $1,200 for a mini Jersey calf cow pair. Now for us, that was a pretty good deal. The cost of a milk cow can range all the way from $900 to $4,000, $5,000, depending on if they're A2, A2, how handled they are, what specific breed they are, if they're registered, all sorts of things. So for the average cost slash low cost option, I'm gonna put it at $1,500. All right, moving on to our next category, milking supplies. We purchased a stainless steel 10 quart milking container with a lid on it for $70. You're gonna need a closed, easy to clean container to pour your milk into when you're milking. So that's gonna say it's $70 for the low cost option too. You're just gonna need it. We also bought two stainless steel milking buckets for $24 each. These buckets we got are nothing special, but you're definitely gonna need at least one for the low cost option, but it's really better to have two just in case something goes south during the milking process. I've seen a really high quality milking bucket be upwards of $100. So this is a pretty generous cost for both us and the low cost option. We also bought 18 half gallon mason jars for $36 total at two bucks a jar. I think you're gonna be paying for this on the low cost option too, because even if you get plastic ones, they're $2 as well. And it's not gonna be really a good idea to reuse old milk jugs or something, especially if you're going through all the trouble to get your own fresh, clean quality family milk. Now you are gonna need a milk strainer. We purchased ours for $50 and it's a four quart stainless steel one. You're gonna be looking about that the same even for a low cost option. Next is a batch of clean white rags. We paid $7 for a pack at Home Depot. You're gonna need those clean white rags to clean off your cow's teat with soapy water before you start the milking process. In a pinch, I suppose you could take an old white towel and tear it up into little pieces for your cleaning cloth. So I'm gonna put that at $0 for the low cost option. The next two are annual costs. One being milk filters. They're about $20 for 200. So if you're milking 300 days out of the year, the cost is gonna be $30. You're also gonna need some soap for cleaning off your cow's teat. That's another annual cost, five bucks for both. So our total cost for all the milking supplies was $246. And for the low cost option, I think you could squeeze that down to 215 total. Okay, next category, I'm gonna call cow accessories. We paid $20 for a halter. You're gonna want a halter if you have a cow. At some point, you're probably gonna to have to use it to move her somewhere or make sure you can get a hold on her head. It's important. Next is a halter leash. So that's just a simple piece of rope that has a halter tied off at the end of it. Assuming your milk cow at some point has a calf that you're gonna need to handle and train, you're gonna want this simple halter leash. It's also good because it can act as just a lasso if you need to grab your cow. I have had to do that before. So $7 for low cost option two. We also purchased a nice leather collar for our cow for $30. It's really great because our cow's generally calm and I can kind of grab her by the collar and lead her around for milking or drag her to somewhere if I really need to. It's been helpful for us, but in a pinch, you could probably do without it. We also have a regular leash that cost us $14. It's not super necessary. We've used it a couple times, but you could go without it. You're most definitely gonna need a brush. We paid $15 for ours. It's like a regular wooden dog brush. You're gonna need this to get some of the larger debris off your cow's udder before milking. I've seen them as low as seven, so $7 for the low cost option. We also have a shedding blade if we need to get more aggressive with the hair scraping. That cost us $12, but I think you could do without it. Next up, you're gonna need a feed scooper and a feed pan, assuming you're giving your cow some sort of grain or alfalfa treat while you're milking. It's pretty essential for a smooth milking process unless you're really great at training cows. That cost us six and $11. I think you could do without the scoop because you could maybe just use an old container or something, but the pan, I think you're gonna want. So the total we spent on cow accessories was $115. And for the low cost option, you can squeeze that all the way down to 34. Pretty good. That brings us to our next category, health and safety. First thing is a milk fever treatment, which costs us $20. 
This is an important resource to have on hand because if your cow comes down with milk fever, you wanna treat it as soon as possible. You don't wanna wait for a vet to have to come all the way out to your property to take care of it. So I'm putting that $20 for the low cost option as well. Next up is a mastitis test kit that costs us $15. I think you should have it in the low cost option too. You're gonna to wanna to be able to test for that periodically if you need to. We also have a natural mastitis treatment which costs us $70. I think it's good to have on hand because it's a pretty common problem, but I guess in a pinch you could start without it and then maybe call a vet if you needed to or try some other natural remedies first. Okay, these last ones are also annual costs. We paid $320 for a free choice mineral starter kit. This had 16 different minerals in it, averaging about five pounds each. And I think a lot of these are gonna last us more than just one year, but some of them our cow is eating a little bit more and for an extra 25 pound bag, the cost is about 20 to $25. So the low cost option for this would be if you were to just go to Tractor Supply and purchase one of their 50 pound bags of a vitamin mineral supplement for your cow. These cost around $18 each, so I'm gonna guess maybe you need four a year, and then also maybe another $20 for a salt lick. So that puts a total at $92. We also needed 16 mineral feeders to serve up all those tasty minerals. That cost us $40. If you're doing the low cost way, you'd probably just need one, so five bucks for that. In addition to the minerals, we also got an RC Gold Vitamin Probiotic Supplement. That cost us $60. If you're going the tractor supply route, that would be included in your mineral feed. So our total for health and safety ended up being $525. And for the low cost, I'm estimating $132, give or take. Our next category is feed. Now this is gonna be one of your biggest annual expenses. I declare bankruptcy! First off, most likely you're gonna have either an alfalfa treat or a grain treat for your cow. These help a cow maintain their weight and also provide more milk while you're milking them. We feed our cow about 60-40 alfalfa grain for her treat. Now we purchase an organic cow feed and an organic alfalfa in 50 pound bags. It's around $30 per bag, which costs us about 60 cents per pound, which ends up being a $900 annual cost feeding 10 months out of the year while she's in milk. Now we could get this cost all the way down to 42 cents for the same feed, but we would have to buy it in thousand pound totes and we would need a big enough tractor to be able to transport it and we would need a good place to store it. If you have a tractor, you could probably do that or maybe you could consider borrowing a neighbor's tractor to get the tote off the truck and into your barn. Now for the low cost option, if you were to just go to Tractor Supply and buy some of their standard sweet feed pellets or alfalfa pellets, it would end up costing you 34 cents a pound. And from the research I did, it doesn't seem like you can really get that cost even much lower if you were to buy that same feed in thousand pound totes. That would put your cost at $1.70 per day, $51 per month, and $510 per year. Boom. All right, let's get at these hay costs. Now for your standard 50 pound bale, the cost can be all the way from $6 up to $14 for some of that crazy horse hay. For sale, not on sale. We paid $7 a bale from a local seller around here that had some no spray hay. This last winter, our cows were eating about half a bale a day. So that put our cost at $3.50 per day. We kept them in the barn eating hay for three months out of the year. So that put our total hay cost for this year at $315. Now I expect that cost to rise a little bit next year because hay is probably gonna cost a little more, but also our calf is gonna be bigger and probably eating more hay during the winter time. Our neighbor here was able to source thousand pound round bales for about $60 each. Now the caveat for that is you need a large tractor to be able to move that around. You'd have to strip off pieces of that to give to your cow, which wouldn't be as easy as just throwing in a bale. But there's also large square bales that weigh a similar amount to that, which would probably be a little bit easier to handle and store, but you'd still need a large tractor. So if you were able to manage those large bales of hay, that would put your hay cost at $1.70 per day. $39 per month and $117 per year. Remember, this is a bit of a tough one to pin down because if you have a shorter growing season or harsher winters, you're gonna be feeding more hay. So it's a little tough to pin down. Total annual feed cost for us is $1,215. If you were able to finagle some of the things I talked about, you could get it down to 617. Moving on to infrastructure. Now this is a big upfront cost that's gonna depend a lot on your situation. We were fortunate enough to have a pole barn already on this property when we purchased it but it didn't have any setup for animals, so we had to build that out. We spent $250 in lumber, and that was to reinforce the walls so the cows wouldn't go flying through the barn. 
that also included creating a deep bedding system on the bottom of the pen and creating a head gate watering station for the cows. And I should mention that there's a 200 square foot stall that we were able to split up in two to split the cow and the calf. But to do that, we also spent about $400 in gates. These are great because we were able to use them as partitions to split the pen in half. Those gates also gave us the capability to remove them because we wanted to get in there afterwards with our tractor and be able to scoop out all that compost that we created on the deep bedding system. I'm gonna reduce this lumber cost a little bit for the low cost option because maybe you could use some scrap wood or maybe you don't build the pen as large or maybe you already have a setup. Now for the low cost gate option, you potentially just use some cattle panel, which go for about 30 bucks a piece. So I'm gonna put that at $120 to create a similar system without actual gates. Now the hardware for this costs about 30 bucks for screws and brackets. Maybe you could use stuff you already have. You're most definitely gonna need a water holding receptacle. We paid $50 for a 40 gallon rubber tub. I think you're gonna need this in the low cost option anyway. It's pretty much the cheapest one you can get that still has enough volume to sustain a cow. Now we paid $160 for wood chips to create a deep bedding system in our barn. This is money well worth spent for us, but maybe you could get free wood chips from Chip Drop or your local arborist. I also wanna mention that I saw a pretty simple cow pen build on Better Together Life's YouTube channel. I think this would be a great setup if you had absolutely no infrastructure to start with and you wanted to keep it pretty low budget. So to build out our barn, it cost us a total of $890. And I suspect if you were gonna do this on the cheap, you could maybe do it for 320. All right, the next big upfront cost for us was fencing. So we needed about 2,000 linear feet of electric fencing. And this included putting a perimeter around about a two acre plot, as well as being able to partition it off into different paddocks for our cows. Everything we used was from Premier One Fencing. To start, we needed 200 foot nets that cost us a total of $360. We needed this to make a loafing area for our cow, as well as lanes to get them to the barn. It's something we specifically needed but I think you could probably do without it if you're doing this on the cheap. The solar powered energizer we got from them cost us $380. This is for a portable battery that hits hard enough to deter a cow. I saw something similar to this for $180 at tractor supply if you wanted to bring that cost down. To create our perimeter fencing and our internal partition, the total was $1,123. And this was for everything, the T-post, the T-post driver, the connectors, the insulators, the brackets, the reels, the inner pigtail posts, all of it. And we opted for the mid-tier twine as well as the higher quality pigtail posts that they sell. And to break that cost down a little bit more, it's about 55 cents per foot. Now from the research I did on their website, I think I could have got this cost down to 23 cents per foot, but that would have been for one single strand around the whole property of their lowest tier twine. And it also would have been using their lowest tier posts, which you have to hammer in and are fiberglass. It also doesn't include the partition that we need on the inside. So for that low cost perimeter fence, it would have been $476. So our total fencing cost came to $1,863. And I think if you wanted to do something similar, minus the nets, you could get it down to $706. Okay, those are all the big ones. Now there's just one other category, potential costs. You might need a vet to come out at some point. So I'm gonna put $50 there just in case you have an emergency. Our calf was also a bull calf, so we wanted to get him banded so he wouldn't breed back his mom. That was a $100 expense from us for the vet to come all the way out here and do that, but maybe you have a heifer calf. I'm also gonna put a $100 on both of these because there's some other items I didn't mention, like for administering pills or magnets, or maybe you need to do a deworming or something like that. I think it's good just to have an extra 100 bucks on there for a few other items you may or may not need. We also need to get a pregnancy test on our cow, which ran us about 20 bucks. I do want to mention other potential hidden costs, which might include saws or tools to build a pen or a fence, or a weed whacker or a mower to manage the pasture while your cow's moving through it. We didn't have any of that stuff to start, so we had to get a lot of that to be able to build not only just our cow stuff, but also our chicken stuff and our other homestead stuff. A lot of people do have generational farm equipment that they can use, so. If you do, that's great. But if not, it's something to think about. Now, before I give you the whopping grand total of all those costs, bankruptcy! I do wanna talk about the financial benefits and value that you can create with that cow. Now, I don't mean to imply that you can extract all of that value into cash money into your pockets, but it still needs to be said. Benefits of a cow, let's go. So our cow gives us about three quarters to a gallon of milk a day. And that's for a one a day calf share milking. And a lot of other cows will give you two or three gallons. Raw dairy can fetch a pretty penny. There is a local sheep farm around here that sells their raw milk, not for human consumption. 
for $16 a half gallon. Raw milk is illegal to sell for human consumption in the state of North Carolina, where we live. There was one other regenerative family farm around here that sold their raw milk for $7 a half gallon. And I talked to another neighbor of mine that has a cow that sells his for $7 a half gallon. Now, depending where you go in the country, you can maybe expect around five, but even if you were to go into a health food store, a nice regenerative grass-fed milk will cost you $6.50 a half gallon, and it's even more for raw milk in like the state of California, where I used to live. So I'm gonna value this raw milk at $14 a gallon, which would give you $4,200 worth of milk value each year if you milk 10 months out of the year on just one gallon. Now using a deep bedding compost system for our cow, we were able to create about 24 cubic yards of compost. The local mulch yards around here charge about $69 per cubic yard of compost. That would mean if you kept your cow in the barn on a deep bedding system, you could turn 24 cubic yards of wood chips into $1,725 worth of compost. And you could multiply that value of the compost by growing a ton of vegetables and fruits with it. Now next up is the manure. Conservatively, a cow will produce 40 pounds of manure per day, and it can be double that for even bigger cows. Now, assuming you're deep bedding that cow, that gives you nine additional months of manure, which would be about 11,000 pounds. And if you were to compare that to a 50 pound bag of manure you'd find at Lowe's, you're looking about $880. Now, can you really sell that manure for $880? Not really, but you're still getting that value. Let's check out this beef. We recently purchased a half cow from a local regenerative family farm around here. The cost ended up being about $8 a pound for all the cuts and ground beef. Let's assume you had a thousand pound cow and you conservatively got 360 pounds of meat out of that. A 36% rate is on the low end. And that doesn't even include the bones. Assuming you raise the calf for beef for two years, that would give you $2,880 worth of beef over a two year period. So you'd end up with $1,440 worth of beef value each year. And don't forget about the intangible value you'd be getting from this cow. You can't pay someone else to know exactly what went in that cow's mouth, exactly where that milk came from, exactly what those cleaning and hygiene practices were. Also, by that cow being out on your pasture, it's gonna improve your land. It's gonna improve soil health and water retaining capacity. It's gonna improve the bug life in your fields, which maybe your chickens can go and eat afterwards. So each year, you can potentially create $8,245 worth of value from that cow. Let's check that out against some of our other totals. Our total cost for this first year is going to be $6,324. The startup being $4,937 and the annual being $1,387. Now my total low cost estimate for this, including the first annual cost and the startup cost is $3,704. Now your startup cost would be $2,950 with an annual cost of $734. If you got any value out of this video, a thumbs up would mean a lot. It really helps out our channel. So there you have some numbers to play with. I'm gonna leave a link in the description with a spreadsheet that I created that you can sort of play with these different expenses to see what you might have and what you might need and come up with your own specific budget for this. I'm also gonna leave some links to some stuff we specifically used if you're looking for a resource for that. Thanks so much for watching, catch you later.